I want to dissect that definition for you. Individually, we all have talents and blessings and energy. But collectively, we are a civilization with the potential to transform the world. Salaam Alaikum. Welcome, my brothers, my sisters, my friends, and humanity. It's such an honor to be in this place and this space with you and speaking after the lovely Nelly and Diane. They are just the definition of their topics. Nelly bringing us a center of peace and Diane with her overwhelming, brimming heart of love. Yesterday, I was at a meetup with a few women and our goal was to raise the vibration of other women to be leaders in their community. And while that is a great vision, we actually bonded on a much deeper level. You know what I mean. That undertow that's in all of our hearts, that facade that Nelly talked about, where we are hiding who we really are because we think that she thinks or she wants or he wants. But we unify together knowing that we're just who we are. Yes, compassion, the softest of compassion because it takes that to lead your own life, your own family, and your own community. Compassion is an art, and it's painted by our experiences, and it guides our talents. Our world is driven by beauty, science, and innovation. We need artists and farmers and scientists. The artists can create, right? And make something extraordinary. But without anyone to share it with, it can make that artist feel meaningless. Although it doesn't diminish the beauty of the work. I met a young girl in Bangladesh and she was an extraordinary artist. She took coral fabric and black fabric and some gold thread and she had embroidered pillowcases and to me it was a masterpiece I looked at it and I saw a lost art no one learns embroidery here anymore in the United States right a hundred years ago it was the norm when my grandmother was a girl and her mother gave me the pillowcase that she created and said she's still learning. And I myself saw the masterpiece. You see, it was a pattern of daisies. And as we know, flowers must have stems and leaves, which are green, but it was all gold thread. But the way she had intertwined the pattern, it was very clear to me that they were separate flowers and I knew where the stems were and where the leaves were. And just like her mother couldn't see the beauty in her gift, we don't realize that without farmers, we can't survive. We cannot eat. And the farmer can grow food, but with no way to transport it to other people his products will go dry they will the people won't have anything to eat a scientist can come up with um, a great innovative way to stop floods and flood zones and irrigate deserts 
but with no way to take it to those people. However, an artist who shares their art like the young girl that I met with someone else, she's just brightened two people's lives. And the farmer who has a network of distributors to get his food and products to marketplaces and to people and into towns can stop starvation and get fresh produce, freshly harvested meat and eggs to people who need it. And the scientists who can teach her flooding and irrigation systems can even stop disease, hunger, and death. When I was in Dhaka with our five children, we now have six, I saw how neighbors really work together. And see, by American standards, they didn't have anything. But there was one farmer who raised chickens and he slaughtered those chickens, plucked them of course, right? And brought them to my mother-in-law's house. And then there was a neighbor of hers who had a garden with fresh vegetables and fruits. Because in Bangladesh, in your garden, you have mangoes and guavas and bananas and papayas. And then there was a weaver who could sew, who made fabric and designed clothes, right? So they knew that she had relatives visiting from the United States and they wanted to give something. And what it looked like was a freshly harvested meal, fresher food than I've ever had, right? We don't get food freshly harvested like that on a regular basis here. And my baby got a custom made outfit with freshly woven fabric. You see, this is what unity looks like in a real neighborhood. They had each one of them a talent. Each one of them, they had blessings. And most importantly, they had the energy and the commerce of compassion. My examples are to bring images of the power of unity and to drive home the point that together we are one. There's no you without me. I stand before you today, the great granddaughter of an Anglican priest and an educator one an immigrant and the other the daughter of an immigrant from Scotland and her mother was Native American and African. Now you know two centuries ago that a white man cannot marry a Native American or an African. She was his slave but he recognized her as his wife and his chil their children as his children. And I'm the daughter of a lawyer who became a judge and a charity worker who were civil rights activists. And I am a Muslim African-American woman married to a Bengali immigrant. You see, I am the definition of unity. I'm the product of several cultures, religions, and values. I tell you my heritage and my background so that you can shed your concept of ethnocentrism. In the Quran, it says that Allah created us all different so that we can say subhanAllah which is to glorify the magnificence of our Lord. 
not to say that you're less or you're more or I'm better, but so that we see the amazing wonder that is our Lord, whether you call it love, the source, our creator. That's what we're all here for. We are all, we are now over 7 billion people on this planet. Not because we don't need each other, <laughs> because we need each other more and more with all of our talents, with all of our blessings, with all of our energy. This is an amazing event. Beautiful sounds, chaos, love, peace. I want you to take the energy from this event. I want you to right now stand up. And I want you to feel from the ground. I want you to fill yourself up your entire being with the energy that is here. Can you feel it? I want you to touch your heart. This is your gift. Take it home with you. And as you leave here, and as you walk into the rest of the days that you have on this planet, I want you to walk in the spirit of unity I want you to be a real sister to your sisters in humanity. I want you to be a real brother to your brother in humanity. And I want us all to see each one of us as one race, which we are. We're all just human. You can sit down, but please hold on to your heart. <laughs> It's time that we unify. Thank you.